Did everything, start the recording, switch screens. Alright guys, welcome back to the very final episode of Ophion. Uh, just very quick announcements at the top of the session before we get in. Uh, first being that while this is going to be the final episode of the Ophion campaign, uh, rest assured that these lovely players of mine will be returning sometime in February for the Almathea uh, campaign. Uh, more <clears throat> details on that as we get closer to February. Uh, but it's going to be in the same time slot, same uh, channel I'm streaming on right now, and uh, should be a good time. Uh, other announcement real quick is that uh, if you have the time to show up uh, this coming Thursday at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm having a big get-together of a bunch of my players from all my games, and they're going to be solving an Iconian problem. Or it'll be a, master cluster, a massive clusterfuck. Who knows? We'll find out. Why not um, both? But other than that, uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, as I told my players, I'm not exactly sure how long it will be today because today is going to be send-off for these characters. It's going to be a lot of uh, interpersonal RP, uh, a lot of loose ends tying up. So I guess we'll just find out. So, Captain, I believe you have the opening log. Mm -hmm. Captain's personal log, stardate 57526.1. The months of bureaucratic hell appear to be over. Despite comments from a few hardline admirals, the Ophion and her crew are seen as heroes for bringing Sloan and Section 31 to justice. His trial was one of the most entertaining dramas I've seen in a long while, and several other elements in Starfleet and the Federation at large have been arrested on corruption or terrorism charges. This is a great victory. Feels good. So what the hell am I going to do with this Admiral promotion that's been offered? I have enjoyed the challenges and the experiences I've had as Captain, and I wouldn't trade it for the universe. However, this is a Fleet Admiral role, though, so maybe there's still opportunities that will get me away from the desk? I still have to wonder. This Admiralty has allowed Section 31 to operate for centuries. Who will stop them from fostering a similar organization? Could that be me? I don't know. No need to make the decision now, though. Commander Panek's return is a joyous occasion and shouldn't be marred by my uncertainty. He seemed different on our brief meeting, though, but he's still the friend I remember. However, I need to be sure that this dark shroud has been removed completely. End log. Alright, and I think it's actually perfect uh, if we start off with the captain and Panek. Uh, having a brief meeting in the captain's ready room, so right. you can you can just go ahead and get started. It's like okay. a token set up. Um, there is two caveats I wish to set before Panek enters the room. Go for it. Um, I'm going to hide a hidden pulse monitor on uh, above my <laughs> chest, and I'm going to give uh, Drake the alert should my pulse cease. Wow. Just in case. Duly noted, Captain. I'll come in guns blazing. <laughs> and but Specifically guns blazing. He's got some fabrication. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him in the least. Anyway. <laughs> I immediately roll to nerve pinch him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Commander Panek, welcome back to the Ophion. And I'll stand and extend a... A uh, hand in, war in welcome? I don't take it. I'd suspect it as much. Mm. And how are you feeling, C Commander? My health is currently well, Captain, and yourself? I'm doing splendid, thank you. It's been a trying few months, and your absence has been missed. I have oh. here the orders from my reinstatement, as well as some Duty schedules I've been preparing in the shuttle on the way over. Straight back at it, I see, Commander. That's. I just take a quick glance down at it. Looks good. You've been cleared by Starfleet Medical. Uh, the Vulcan Commission has cleared you for duty. Um, how much do you remember before pr proceeding with the ritual? I was in and out of a coma state that they kept me in. I do not remember much. Mm. What about your time on the Ophion bef when the aggressive presence took over? Most of that is shades of darkness that I 
it flashes up every now and again. I see. Okay. Um, before I sign this, Pinek, um, you're aware of the actions that have... I just need to be... Sh There's stuff going on in that I will be willing to share with the crew shortly, but I do need to be sure of one thing for my own personal uh, sense of comfort, if you don't mind. If that's um, something you feel you need, Captain, although it is purposely emotional. Uh, yep. That's us, isn't it? Per perfect, imperfect emotionality. Um, I'm going to stand around the desk, uh, come up close to Pinek, uh, reach down to his uh, to his hands, and place them around my neck. And I'm going to stare at him in, square in the face as I do so. This is most odd behavior, Captain. Should I call the tenant, Jessa? I'm assuming you don't flinch or the... I don't feel the fingers tighten or any of that? No. <laughs> okay. Then I'll step back and let them drop to the ground. Uh, well, drop to the side. I just had to be sure. Your other self threatened my life on several occasions. And I will add my thumbprint to the approval. Welcome back, Commander Pinek. Uh, you are, once again, my first officer of the Ophion. Thank you, Captain. Uh, I will return to my duties. Excellent. And as he goes, as he stands and heads out, I just slump back and just go, <sighs> and remove the uh, pulse monitor from my um, body. All right. Um, I, uh, I'm going to message the captain. All right. Yep. Uh, Drake to Captain Skull. Captain Skull. Skull here. Everything's okay, Lieutenant. Uh, just checking to make sure the heart monitor went blank. And I'll stare at Panek as he's walking out when I say that. <laughs> Um, next up is, um, I'd like to call, um, Lieutenant Junior Grade Gord Locke to the, my ready room, please. Okay. Uh, junior huh. Grade? Would you believe, I believe that's what I don't I think, think you're still Junior Grade. Nah, he's, uh, he's full Lieutenant. Um, oh, he is full Lieutenant. Oh, then I'm going to have to make a quick note, because I was going to promote him to full Lieutenant. Do, 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 do. <laughs> was it? There he is. Captain, have I been demoted? <laughs> 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 Lieutenant Gord Locke. No, Mr. Locke. Um, in reviewing all of the all of this uh, paperwork and cross examination of our attitude of our exploits the last few months has led me to understand I have done you a minor disservice and I wish to rectify that. Oh, oh no apologies necessary, Captain. I mean, uh, after all, um, it's more, more than fair for me beaming photons into your ready room. <laughs> well, I, I believe... Yes, and you've accepted full blame for that, but I also believe in passing out responsibility and accolades where it's due. Um, my chair, um, I had attributed that to Merthrin and his engineering team, but Lieutenant Sona has said that it was you who, should, uh, who I should uh, give thanks. Yes, it doesn't squeak anymore at all. The grinding... No. Is barely noticeable. No, I was quite surprised to find out that most of the swivels had been replaced by pocket uh, zero G containment units. I take it that's one of your small R and D projects. Well, uh, there are pieces left over, and it wasn't working right, and I needed to find some way of making it stay upright. So I reappropriated something. Yeah, yes. Well, very well. Thank you so much for your. Uh, constant as attention to even the most minute of details, Lieutenant. You're very welcome, Captain. Anytime you can always count on me to fix it when I wreck your chair. Yeah, careful what you say. I may have to hold you to that. Smile wryly and head back to whatever paperwork I'm working on. Now, how the hell is a rear admiral different from a fleet admiral? What? Why are there so many different admirals? 
Are you asking that out loud? No, I'm just sort of muttering to myself. Well, uh, traditionally in naval terms, the rear admiral will be the one who uh, was at the back. Hence the term rear admiral. Rear, um, rear of actual engagements. Mm. Sounds boring. No wonder none of them smile. Thank you, sir. Dismissed. Missed. And that's it for me for the moment. All right. Then we are going to cut to main engineering. Where, uh, you know, Mirthrin, uh, since there's been pretty much bureaucratic proceedings for the past few months, the good news is that aside from normal ship maintenance, there hasn't really been a whole lot to do. So you've had lots of free time to do whatever. Um, but today, uh, after you finished your daily stand-up with all the... Uh, We'll say, I don't want to say department heads, but kind of like your sub-team leaders. Uh, Xenixia does linger. And uh, as soon as it's just pretty much just you two, uh, Xenixia says, uh, Lieutenant Commander, do you have a moment? The bathroom looks up. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm free after this. Well, I was hoping to get your opinion on something, if that's all right. Hmm. By all means. Uh, well... I have been, shall we say, offered a promotion. Uh, it is still in the works, and it still needs the captain's approval, of course, but uh, as I understand it, Starfleet is willing to commission me as an officer rather than keep me as enlisted. And I, I was just curious if you had uh, any advice on that front. And Mr. was sort of like, pause what he's doing and um, sort, of, uh, sort of look up and sort of consider Xenixia for a bit. Hmm. Well, before I answer that question, let me ask you one. Certainly. Certainly. What is Starfleet to you? Well, uh, it's become my home. Uh, not that I would ever abandon fully my ring world, but I've seen so much and learned so many things that I simply just want to continue seeing more. Sort of nod. It would be it would be quite an undertaking. I mean, apart from anything else, once you become Starfleet, you're part of something much bigger and there's a sense of responsibility to everyone in the Federation, not just your crew, not just your home. Would, uh, would you say that I'm ready to be an officer? I, I don't really have a good gauge of this sort of thing. <clears throat> well, let me put it this way. I have been a lieutenant commander for the better part of two years now. I didn't feel that I was ready to be one until about three months ago. I mean, you, you could have fooled me, lieutenant commander. Or you Sure, I, I, every once in a while I get the, the sense that you're a little bit uh, hesitant or you're anxious, but you've never really given me a uh, pause or reason to question uh, that you're capable. Hmm. Which is part of where the trick comes in. Uh, beyond a certain point, you find yourself, you stop worrying about whether you can do it and all your effort focuses on making sure that you're there for your team. I see. These are very interesting insights, but guess I'm just... I'm hesitant still. I I think I can handle it, but I understand that it would be the first of my species to be a Starfleet officer, and I'm not so sure that I'm the best representative of my species. Well, if it makes the choice easier, Starfleet has never been one to turn someone down for taking time to think. 
Hmm. And uh, on that subject, actually, and he'll sort of finish up what he's uh, putting on the console and, like, shut down the display. Mm-hmm. There, was some, mm, there was something I wanted to ask your advice on, actually, and he's all sort of uh, sort of indicate to sort of head out towards the, like, the nearest lounge or whatever, like, I'm not sure how close engineering is to the duck, but, like... Uh, you know, it's a few decks down, but um, you can yeah, so no you, problem. So d- doing a sort of walk and talk. Okay. Of course, she follows you as I uh, as I get the duck ready. Mm-hmm. What do you think of... What, what, what do you think of the idea of me spending some time at your ring world for a while? Back there, uh, I mean, I personally don't have a problem with it. I'd be more than welcome to come visit uh, where I'm from. But I'm I'm curious, what is it you hope to see there? Well, um, ad- admittedly, part of it is a, a, a little bit presumptuous on my part, but. Uh... With you being with you being on the ship for as long as you have, I, I feel a little possessive of the place. I want to make sure it's doing well, that we're that we're doing right by them. Oh. well, I mean, as I said, uh, I have no qualms with uh, taking you there myself and showing you around and making sure that uh, you're well cared for. Mm. Yes, I'm. Uh... Thinking of either taking a leave of absence from the Ophion or getting a transfer to a ship operating in the area. Well, uh, if it makes you feel any better, uh, Lieutenant Commander, I would love to follow your career myself if possible. So just let me know. And I guess I will do my best to, I believe the expression is follow in your footsteps. (laughs) Oh, well, metaphorically. Uh, yeah, out, out of character, I'm just thinking about what to say next. That's okay. Um, but yeah, you, uh, at this point, you know, you guys get to the duck, and it's pretty quiet. Uh, as uh, seems to be a new trend, uh, the girl squad, as I'm calling them, Jisa, Zareed, Vara, Ty, uh, they're having what's basically hen night, uh, off in one of the corners, but... Other than that, it's just Shrika, uh, yourself, and Zenixia in the duck at the moment. And Metron will sort of, like, get yeah, grab. Well, by this point, he probably knows what kind of drinks Zenixia likes. Mm-hmm. And it's worth saying that uh, any any uh, anybody else can jump in at any time. Just shout. I would like some help here. I'm running out of conversation topics. <laughs> oh, I have something for the two of you, but it's not promotion ceremony. Sorry. No. Oh. Um, well, actually, would I have heard about that at this point? Um, that's entirely up to the captain. Um, whether or not he's revealed that he's thinking of promoting some people. I would think so. It's um, it would be general knowledge that the captain has asked all crew to assemble at the. Where was it? The Federation Plaza in San Francisco? Uh, something uh, like that. It would be one of the uh, garden areas, uh, one of the fields at Starfleet Headquarters. Yeah. Uh, such and such a date and time, roughly, I don't know, four or five hours from now. All right. Um, let's see. Um, so I, I, I think actually, so, so probably... Um, just to put a button on the scene, after a bit of thought, Mothra will say, I will say, though, if you do decide to join Starfleet, I would be happy to have you here. And uh, Zenixia oh. raises her glass and says, to a bright future. Um, oh. Actually, I have a Does couple lines from Zareed that could jump to start something for you guys. Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. To a bright future built on, built on, built on a dark past. Uh, Zareed's going to quickly jump away from her um, girl's night and come sit down with you guys. She's had a few to drink, apparently. Oh my god, I can't... Have you guys heard? 
Hmm? She looks at you. No, he hasn't told you. You haven't heard? The Slough's I haven't, member, ha member, haven't the, heard what? The Slough's uh, petition for membership has just cleared uh, the second hurdle. They're, we're about to send amb ambassadorial teams to finalize the negotiation process. So I imagine but, both Mirthrin and Zenixia are sort of like, oh, taken aback at that? I mean, Zenixia is a little bit surprised, but she mm -hmm. certainly takes it as the good news it is. Yeah, so Mirthrin will sort of throw for it and then sort of smile turns to Zenixia and says, you know what? I think, I, I think that is as good a sign as any. Indeed. I... I, I honestly wonder who they're going to send. I really don't know. All they say is a diplomatic corps and a Starfleet presence. I, maybe it's the Ophion. Who knows? I'd really like to talk to your queen again. I learned a lot from talking to Queen Zenixi of that. Wait, not allowed to talk about that anymore, am I? But I learned a lot. I'd like to go back and learn some more from a queen of this timeline. See if there's any differences. Well, with any luck, I guess we will find out uh, if you're able to come along with us. And Xenixia fills you in about Mirthrin's plan to go to the ring world for a little bit. Um, Zuri sort of drunkenly smiles and says, That'd be... Sw I, I'd f I've had a good time on this ship. Hopefully we'll continue to have more good times. And Xenixia sort of <laughs> raises her glass to that. And uh, probably at some point, Mertzman will sort of glance over at Jisa and the others and just sort of like get, get, give an apologetic smile and sort of nod to say, yeah, she's a little tipsy. Mm. All right. So uh, with that in mind, uh, does anyone else have any planned scenes before we cut to big promotion time? Mm. Mine's not cool. planned. It's kind of impromptu. I just kind of threw it well, together. Oh, impromptu works Go too. For he just went... AFK though, so. Up, oh, yep. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to go and find uh, um, Preer if he's in the sick bay or yeah, his quarters. Yeah, he's in sick bay, I think. <laughs> All right, so uh, Preer, uh, you know, you've much like Mirthrin, haven't had a whole lot to worry about in uh, in sick bay. I mean, you know, you get the occasional bump or bruise or something that actually needs medical attention. But for the most part, you've been free to pretty much explore whatever experiments, whatever extra work you've uh, had in mind. All right. I've been just keeping busy doing some experiments, seeing how things interact, such as that. <laughs> gotcha. And at some point during this, I suppose the captain strolls on in. Yeah. Um, the captain strolls in, um, notices that Vara is both here and in uh, the dock. That's kind of odd, but hey, clones. <laughs> yeah, um, you know. I yeah. can only do so many tokens at once. <laughs> He's uh, going to um, sort of take a small detour around uh, Sick Bay, um, find a small uh, carpeted panel that's down by the f um, down by the uh, intersection between wall and floor. Uh, give it a small kick, and it's going to fall open. Uh, Captain's going to reach down underneath and pull out a dusty bottle of whiskey. Prayer will walk over. Can I help you, Captain? Yes. Uh, Beckett had uh, Beckett always kept a couple secret stashes of this stuff around. I, being a good captain, I tried not to bust him on it too much, but. I figured we'd have a quick drink. You, me, and... I looked down at my stomach. All of us, I suppose. Sounds like a wonderful idea. <laughs> uh, there's... I'm afraid... Of, I do apologize that we haven't had much chance to... do a, uh, getting to know one another as I would have liked. It's been... Well, my pa the paperwork alone would have... Ha I've had to sign has filled this sick bay. It has been a little uh, full force here recently. Mm. Just a question completely off the record, if you don't mind. Absolutely. You're uh, the Prayer Symbiote. And, uh, well, the Prayer Symbiote has served in Starfleet for mo almost all of its life, if I'm looking at this right. 
Yep. All of my hosts have been in Starfleet, even before Trill was a mem- um, member planet. Now, I do have to ask, were your hosts interested in joining their, the Trill Space Fleet or Starfleet before you got joined? Or did this happen after the joining? Uh, my first host was uh, part of the uh, Trill Space uh, Fleet and then was joined and uh, was an engineer. And when the Federation came around, got permission to uh, join the Federation as an engineer and was on many ships prior to the Constitution classes. And was that your host's choice? Or do you believe that the symbiote influence them in any way? Oh, I think it was my host choice, although the symbiote probably had a little um, thirst for exploration. Mm. I'm facing a difficult decision, Jackson, and I'm definitely leaning one way on the issue, but I'm not entirely sure if this is Barton's choice, or if this is once again the my symbiote attempting to influence decisions. I'm wondering if you have any insight on what you and your symbiote's relationship is. And um, I take a good swig of the whiskey. <gasps> Woo! That's a aged well. Noted as I take a drink as well. Um, my symbiote has enjoyed all aspects of being part of the Federation, both engineering, science, even in command. Um, I personally uh, have a really strange relationship with my symbiote as the symbiote actually knew my father for, uh, through the previous, its previous host um, before the Dominion attacked the ship that inevitably killed both my father and the host. Um, but I think through all of it, my symbiote has enjoyed the exploration, but the choice to explore was always the host. Yeah, good insight. Mine's been the opposite, at least for the last few life hosts. The desire to explore join Starfleet has always come after joining. I'm at one point I wonder if it's worth even f- fighting against this the symbiote. I mean the coadjuvant nat- nature of it has definitely got the symbiosis commission and I say that sort of as a swear word um interest peaked and they're watching my career with some interest. I th- I think the previous host or the symbiosis commission wanted to give the uh, symbiote a stable life as a, a space merchant before the symbiote had other plans. Yeah, a space merchant isn't quite as fun as going out to the edges of space and exploring. No. Well, what's so your take is, or uh, so what's your take? Should I do what's r- is what is right for Barton also right for the symbiote, or should I just let the symbiote experience captainship for a while longer? Without sounding philosophical, Captain, I think you should do whatever you think is best. Yeah. Thank you, Jackson. I'll pour a small another small shot of it and continue sipping on the way out the door. You've been a great... You've been a Wonderful chief medic and a great friend. And you have been a wonderful commanding officer, sir. (laughs) And I'll head out. Realize I'm still holding the glass half-finished in the hallway, down it in a shot, and then toss the glass in the nearest uh, recycler, hopefully before any crewman catches me drinking on duty. (laughs) I don't think anyone would say anything either. Uh... (laughs) I, I think they know that uh, right now it's not like you need to be super sober or anything. Uh, but is uh, is Drake back? I am. 
Cool. I think someone had a scene <laughs> with you. Yeah, in my office, please. Sure. Let me just find where that office is. There it is. And you guys can get started as I figure out tokens. <laughs> I suppose I hear the door chime. Uh, enter. Uh, Drake will walk in and then stand at uh, stiff attention in front of the desk. Lieutenant, now that I've been reinstated, the Ophion's logs and reports have been released to me and I've done some catching up. I thought I'd let you know that I'm pulling you off bridge duty, and I've submitted a formal request to Starfleet for your transfer off the Ophion. Drake continues to stand there. You are well within your rights as a Federation citizen and a Starfleet officer to begin an appeal process. Uh, if you believe you can speak with the uh, liaison at Starfleet uh, headquarters. Drake just continues to stand there and stare at that L car behind uh, Panek's head. Are you wondering my reasoning behind this, Lieutenant? You are free to speak here. Nope. I, uh, I have no reason why, uh, or no questions why you would do this. <clears throat> I'll just raise my eyebrow at him, and I'll shuffle some paths around, and I'll say, very well. Then you are dismissed, Lieutenant. Of course, Commander. And Drake will spin on his heel and go to walk out the door. <clears throat> and, uh, he'll stop. I wonder when, uh, I wonder what the uh, next chief of security is going to look like on this ship, especially when you take over. Wonder if um, you're going to let him do his job, and then I'll walk out the door. All right. <laughs> so I'm actually I'm curious. Uh, that atmosphere is thick enough to swim through. <laughs> exactly. I'm actually curious, Panek. What what was your reasoning for uh, for transferring him off? Oh, uh, just his past actions have shown a pattern of uh, duplicity. And uh, I had a whole thing about trust being emotional and and logic. and But yeah, because uh, he was manipulated by Section, Section 31, and I expected more of an intelligence officer than that. Okay. <coughs> I had a feeling that's what it was, but, uh, you know, now we know. Cool. All right. Uh, anyone else have a scene before we get to uh, promotion time? I think maybe a, a small scene with Prier in the sure. sick bay. In sick bay. All right. Let me, uh... All right. Break the tension with some comedy. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can definitely get started as I find Locke's token. There it is. Locke walks in awkwardly. He's like, uh, "Hi, Pri um, Lieutenant. Do you have time for a drop-in medical appointment?" Absolutely. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Uh. I've been trying out some new holodeck programs, getting some physical exercise, um, and I seem to have hurt my back. Understood. Take a seat. Let me grab my tricorder. All right. I have a seat and kind of get my tunic off. All right. I grab my tricorder and scan. All right, Prier, there roll me a uh, reason medicine. Difficulty zero. I don't think we actually need to do this roll, but we're doing it for a reason. So all along Locke's back are deep, deep scratches. I, I think I fell on some pointed rocks. Were the safeties on? Ev evidently <laughs> not. It must have been a glitch. I'll, I'll look at that right after this. But, you know, it's... Yeah, Prier. I mean, Locke can tell you one thing, but your professional medical opinion is that a certain Commander Shatsu... May or may not be the actual cause behind those scratches. Locke is squirming awkwardly and blushing extra blue. <laughs> Prayer just smiles. Sure, jagged rocks. It's ever so I'll jagged. Take, I'll take your word for it. Let me just, grab my dermal regenerator for you. Yeah, just a uh, doctor patient confidentiality applies, right? Even if it's a really embarrassing injury? Absolutely. How, how is uh, the sick baby treating you? Well, you're the first person in the room. Well, other than the captain who came and said hi. 
It's been pretty boring. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't come down. It's uh, not often we get injured. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> Although it makes my life a little boring. Yes, it's it's uh, being the ship's doctor. It's almost as boring as being the ship's transporter chief. Ah, uh, poor All kinds chief. of stories about sad lives of transporter chiefs. <laughs> They just stare at the same panel all day. So I've heard. <laughs> with, a, with a little half smile on your face? How goes it up on the bridge, Locke? Oh, diagnostic after diagnostic. It's yeah, That's a tender spot right there. I think that, that shoulder got twisted kind of hard, too. Um, trying to keep everything running. It's, it's it feels good to have the whole Sloan thing settled and all the threats kind of dealt with. I would have to agree with you. It's nice having a little downtime after rapid mission after rapid mission after being hurled forward in time and having to come back in time. <laughs> Agreed. It's it's. I keep waiting for something something horrible else to happen. Some other some other uh, boot to drop. There's an old Earth saying that's about knocking on wood. I think you should. I don't believe there's any wood used in the construction of the oak. Do you need me to replicate you aboard? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> the medical replicator might produce a, a more accurate facsimile of wood than my uh, court, the one in my quarters. I will walk over and replicate a board. Okay. You literally pull out a two by four. You sort of hand it the lock. Well, uh, after you, knock on wood. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll so. do so. Nice. Now that that's over, and I just throw the two by four behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Doctor. I feel much better already. I might have to take my a tunic to the dry cleaners, but I mean. Well, my undershirt, at least, uh, the blue matches my skin. Or doesn't it's, it hides the stains. Oh, I imagine uh, that's why security always wears red. We used to always wear red. But most species in Starfleet don't necessarily have red. Oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So up next, uh, Drake has requested a scene with Zareed in the duck. So this is, uh, you know, Zareed's probably a little bit more sober because she does need to be present for the the promotion ceremony in a few hours. But uh, at this point, the rest of the girls have broken up. It's pretty much just Zareed and uh, Shrika in the duck. And at this point, you know, Drake, you, you walk on in and I guess you make a beeline for Zareed or something along those lines. Lieutenant Drake, come, have a seat. I think I've started before you. Sorry about that. Uh, Drake will sit down and uh, kind of looks a little, little somber, but he'll sit down and <clears throat> order a drink from uh, Srika. And um, when it finally shows up, uh, he just kind of like stares at the drink, kind of swirls it around a little bit. And, uh... Hey, what's wrong? Well... I, uh... Not gonna be on the, uh... Ophion much longer. Oh. Well, that's... Disappointing. Is there anything I could say to change the captain's mind? Well, you see, that's... That's the problem. It's not the captain. It's, oh, um, it's and I just do one of those weird uh, hand over face things and just go completely stone dead faced. Is it yeah. him, the uh, robot with pointed ears? Drake will, will crack a smile at that, and uh, well, I mean he's gonna think it's because of him, but I hadn't really told anybody but the captain. But uh, I'm being promoted and taken off the Ophion and I'm going back to work for uh, well 
and he takes a drink of my previous employers. But uh, yeah, the little little pointy-eared robot is going to think that he did it, and it has nothing to do with him. Oh, I'm going to miss our chats. We've, you know, it took me a long time to find a good friend on this ship. Someone who, you know, I'm just going to make gestures over, you know, the bodysuit to indicate all the tattoos I have. Someone who sort of thinks like me, you know? Oh, I, I do. Um, and I thought I was uh, making headway with some of the uh, the other crew about why I do what I do. But, well, I guess he wasn't here for when my talents actually got used the most. But I think the worst part about it is I will miss people that I met on this ship. But the worst part that's really going to gnaw at me. Really not. It's the fact that that little bastard thinks that he's the reason that it happened. Hmm. Like to see what what he would have done with Sloan, but you know, if it was up to him, he probably would have put him in irons and shipped him off to the nearest jail and let him start everything all over again. Hmm. Probably. Um, I'm not allowed to know much about it, but it sounds like he got what he deserved if the trial if the televised trial kept all the details intact and drake will just kind of like meet her eyes over the top of his glass and yeah well televised things can be faked i suppose but i'm still on this ship so if you want me to you know spread the good words about you yeah i do a mock salute. You can count on me, sir. <laughs> I I would appreciate that. Um, but uh, don't get yourself in trouble with him. He, uh, he uh, I, as much as he's an officer and he's just doing his duty, he uh, sure doesn't take into account what anybody else thinks or feels. But, you know, Vulcan. What yeah, are you gonna Vulcan. Do? Eh, there's ways to influence Vulcans. You just have to think outside the... You have to think so illogically that it wraps around and comes at logic from the other side. Yeah. Well, I thought when he was the, uh... The, uh, not nice Panek. Or maybe the easier to deal with Panek. Either way, I, I thought maybe we'd make a breakthrough by the fact of just beating the crap out of each other, but... Uh, well, I guess he was too weak for that too, but anyways. Um and Drake will finish his glass, turn around to Shrieka and ask for another one. Sure. Shrieka will give, give you one, no problem. And that's that's all I had. Yeah. Cool. If you excuse me, uh, Mr. Drake, I think I'm a bit tipsy and should probably sober up before going down to Earth. Yeah, you don't wanna be uh well inebriated when you go down to be there to give people promotions. I've been there. It, it it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. Nor does throwing up in the potted plants. No. No, do. it really doesn't. Uh, had to, uh, when I tell... I'll have to, When we touch base again, I'm going to have to tell you the story of how I had to eat the Tellerite ambassador's home-cooked meal in order to ensure a good trade deal. Now, if you excuse me, Mr. Drakey, I'm out. And I'm going to make a swervy line t towards the exit. And Drake's just going to stay in the duck until, unless somebody else, like, calls him somewhere. All right. Oh. Just, a, just a man sitting alone, staring out the window with a noir jazz theme plays in the background. Exactly. All right, well, uh, I believe at this point we can cut to Starfleet HQ. And yeah, at this point, pretty much everyone that is uh, receiving a promotion uh, is present. Uh, there is sort of a, I, I would say there's probably a good 30 to 40 individuals um, comprising of not only Ophion uh, crewmen, but also, you know, visiting Brass, um, I think I have a token for her. Yeah, I do. Um, so Admiral Astier is there. Uh, she is pretty much going to oversee the entire proceedings. Um, Admiral Ross is there. 
Uh, I don't have a token for Admiral Ross, but you all know what Admiral Ross looks oh. like. Out of character, is Astia from one of the other campaigns? Uh, Astia was originally introduced in Adiona, but uh, uh, it's something like a few months before she shows up there. So, mm. so um, tying the tying the shared universe together. So mm. if we kill her now, we break the space time continuum. Yes. Maybe she can't die. Have you considered that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not find out, shall we? Please yeah. refrain from crawling the temple on that place. Oh, dear. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the reason I put Astia on the screen is because, uh, Captain, she does kind of pull you aside. And she says, have you made your decision, Captain? I have. And I... Will ac I will accept the promotion. And she smiles uh, very uh, slowly and says, Very well. Your promotion will be first, and then I will let you have the honor of promoting your underlings. I'd prefer that you use the word crew rather than underlings, Admiral. Oh, my mistake. Uh, you must realize that, uh, well, I know my accent really doesn't say much, but... Where I'm from, it's uh, it's not exactly a bad term to use. I shrug and say, very well. So, uh, with that, uh, Admiral Astier walks over to where a podium has been set up. And she begins to speak and her voice is amplified <laughs> throughout the field. And she says... Today, I have the great honor of overseeing this promotion ceremony, not only for the illustrious Captain Skull, but for many of you as well. You all have performed admirably in your career aboard the starship USS Ophion. I don't think Starfleet could ask for a better crew. And it is my hope, and the Admiralty's hope as well, that these promotions reflect not only our continuing trust in you, but in our commitment to supporting not only you, but Starfleet moving forward. So first, <laughs> I have the utmost pleasure of promoting one Captain Skull to the official position of Rear Admiral. And she motions for you to come up to the podium and uh, as you get up there, she sort of extends a hand, and uh, assuming you shake it back, it's a very firm mm -hmm. handshake. And in the process, uh, she begins to remove the pips from your collar and replaces them with a black bar with two gold pips inlaid on it. And as soon as she's done, she again smiles, steps a little bit away from the podium, and allows you to make a speech. When I... To, when I was released from Starfleet Medical two years ago and given command of the of the Prometheus class vessel USS Ophion, I honestly felt that I was not worthy of such a command or deserving of the trust that Starfleet had put in me. I had not I had written it down to the fact that after a war, Starfleet was desperate for officers, and I was one of those officers that they found at the bottom of a barrel somewhere. Looking back, I was a fool to judge myself so harshly. Um, I'm a, I have not only proven myself as an officer, but I have the support of an entire crew and several other Starfleet personnel have supported my journey into becoming who I am today. And it is my hope that I will act as a, uh, in a similar fashion to those who are rising up as part of the crew, those who report to me, uh, or just those I know through other contacts. It has been a very wild two years, and I look forward to seeing what Starfleet will do in the next two years. Thank you all for your support. And there's, you know, round of applause, a few cheers, and SDA basically hands you a case of pips and says, the floor is yours, Rear Admiral. Mm -hmm. Rear Admiral Barton Skull, that is going to... That's a lot of syllables to say. <clears throat> I just mutter as I step up to the once again with case in hand. 
It is one of the greatest pleasures that I have had as captain. When I see those of my crew rise to heights that they may not have known they were capable of. The USS Sophion is a great ship that has done great things. But only because its crew has stepped up to face every challenge that the universe has thrown at us. It is here that I wish to recognize the efforts of several members of the USS Sophion. And I'll step down to each individual who's... And pin the pip on their uh, collar. Chief Petty Officer Tin Thrin Zeraz. Uh, you are now promoted to the rank of Ensign. Chief Petty Officer Pranok Glach uh, Gelas. I pronounce... I promote, uh, I promote you to Ensign. Ensign Sanford Patrick Quakenbush. Uh, you have been promoted to Lieutenant Junior Grade. Congratulations. Lieutenant hey, Gordlock. Gord hmm? Sorry? No, no, I bumped ah. the key. Ah. Uh, Lieutenant Gordlock, you have been promoted. I'm promoting you to Lieutenant Commander and Head of the Science Division, as well as R&D on the Ophion. Lieutenant Junior Grade Jackson Preer, um, for your time serving as Chief Medical Officer, I hereby promote you to Lieutenant. Lieutenant Commander Ake Shatsu, in, li in light of your service as long-standing Chief Tactical Officer on board the USS Ophion and Commander of Beta Shift, I promote you to Commander. Lieutenant Commander Tag, Tag McTurek, I promote you to Commander. And finally, Lieutenant Savrick Murthrin, or Lieutenant Commander Savrick Murthrin, you have been promoted to Commander. And finally, I pull out a separate case that I've been hiding in a rear pocket. Now that the technology has been fully declassified, and the, and the quantum slipstream drive is general knowledge to all, I would like to bring uh, attention to two of my crew that have, that have helped develop this technology. While behind, um, while away from Federation space, without the luxuries of a full test lab. Uh, Lieutenant Gordlock and Commander Savrick Murthrin, please step forward. And, so, although Murthrin was sort of expecting the promotion to Commander, he's now visibly confused as he steps forward. On behalf of the uh, Starfleet, um, eh, on behalf of Starfleet, I hereby give both of you the Cochrane Medal of Excellence for science and for your contributions to the field of science and technology. And I, I imagine there's a round of applause at that point. Oh, yeah. well. oh much there's, so. There's, there's applause, there's cheers, and every, it, it's just a general aura of mirth and <laughs> pleasure, and everybody's happy. Like, I don't think anyone's like, grr, he got promoted, kind of a thing. <laughs> nope, good for them. Um, we've come a long way since the end of the Dominion War. There are those that who fear that Starfleet has changed as a result of those horrible times. But I'm pleased to say that with these officers and my crew around me, the spirit of Starfleet is as strong as ever. And I will lead the final round of applause. All right. And when you uh, step away from the podium last more, Astia steps up one final time and says, Well, everyone, I don't think I need to tell you that the ceremony is over. Refreshments will be served in the atrium following this ceremony. And I look forward to seeing you all there. With yeah. that, you all are dismissed. And you uh, know, the uh, the there. the gathered people begin to split up. Um, mm -hmm. You're of course free to linger, uh, but at this point, it's entirely up to you where you proceed. Um, I will start. I will um, ask that the senior staff reassemble on the Ophion at um, time of plus four hours. Okay. So tons of time to mingle on Earth. Where I, um, I'm quickly going to head, uh, see if I can't catch Admiral Astler before she vanishes entirely. Astia, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're Astia, able to grab sorry. her, no problem. And she That's says, an, uh, uh, yes, what can I do for you, Skull? Well, I'm curious as to my role as Fleet Admiral, sir. The, um, or Rear Admiral. Does, my understanding is it's a fleet-based position, correct? Correct. 
uh, for the beginning part of your command, you will be in charge of those ships that are operating out in the Sabine Expanse. And let's just say that there's something in the works. It's still, still dependent on a few things, but let's just say if you perform admirably in the next couple years, you will have an even greater fleet to command. I will raise an eyebrow. Admiral, as I'm also an admiral now, literally everything I do is admirably, is it not? Hmm. I see you uh, haven't lost your punny side with the promotion. It's, I've fought against Section, Starfleet, uh, Section 31 Admiral, who literally beamed a, quote, a quantum torpedo onto my bridge. It's going to take more than a couple admirals and a mountain of paperwork to fully quash the spirit. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Uh, tell me, do you have any plans uh, for your first order as Rear Admiral? Yes, I intend to hold a special ceremony for Pinek. Ah. And I just sort of tap the space on my collar where the fourth pip used to be. Ah, well, I recall seeing paperwork about that. I think it's well-deserved. As do I. I hope the new... I hope he is fully recovered and that he that the role will suit him. Very good. Is there anything else, uh, Skull, that I can help you with? Not at the moment, Admiral. I'm sure I will have a great deal of que great number of questions as I settle into my new position. But for the moment, I shall just sit on the, my laurels. And she smiles, begins to walk away, uh, pauses, and turns back and says, "Oh." Uh, one thing that the paperwork didn't mention, we're assigning Commander Cam to you as your yeoman. Uh, you may use her as you see fit. Commander Cam, Commander Cam, I know that name. Lysithia, right? Uh, correct. Uh, she will be returning in... I... Uh, what's the start date? Uh, when she gets back with the Lysithia, she will be transferring to your command. I'm just going to snicker a bit. Oh, Beckett's going to hate this. And just sort of wander, wander away, l r raise a casual salute to the Admiral, and grab the nearest glass of champagne and go join various crewmen in toast. Alrighty. So, uh, while I... I'm supposing you're having the ceremony for Panek in the duck, yeah? I was actually planning on having it in the bri on the bridge. Okay. It seemed logical. I can do the, the bridge brick as well. for a second. Let me do the bridge. <laughs> All right. Um, so while I get that set up, does anyone else have any scenes they'd like to get out of the way? Um, I I actually do. Sure. Um, you know <laughs> but it might require to use a bunch of tokens, and we can absolutely wait till after uh, Panek, uh, Panek's little thing. Um, um, I kind of want to get the junior officers together to, um, uh, or security officers together to, um, uh, uh, kind of like give a thumbs up or, you know, a uh, hip hip hurrah to, uh, Quackenbush. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know what? We can just do that theater of the mind for the moment because that is quite a number of tokens. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> go for it. Drake, um, not in uniform. Um, we'll call everybody together in the in the duck. All the junior officers, obviously Shrika and Zeb, um, even um, Shatsu, if she can be torn away from Locke. Um, I mean, literally, but yeah. Dermot did read her on standby prayer. I'm glad someone else said it. No, um, and. Um, Drake is just going to give a very short speech to Quackenbush about um, welcome to the ranks of the junior officers, no longer an ensign. Yeah, well, I, I had a good run, but that sort of bike taps the books. They got me in the end. This true, very true. And uh, now you've gone from working for a living to working for someone else for a living. And, and truly the worst of all outcomes. And as a security officer, being a lieutenant is the worst ever. Because not only do you have to wear the red shirt, but you're usually the first one in the door. As long as I still get together in the old what for, eh? Uh, 
still the man with the meanest right hook in, in the entire fleet. And yeah, and I'll sort of like raise a glass to that. And then as everybody kind of, you know, pats him on the back or whatever, Drake will walk over and put his arm around him and just tell him as a security officer, always remember number one duty is to protect your crew, the people around you. And, uh, and, uh, and to make sure everybody's safe. Drake will and, get um, of- Yeah, and uh, uh, Quake and Bush will actually sort of like drop the sort of the brava- uh, the sort of outer bravado for a bit and get uh, a little bit serious and say that something that you uh, and say and that you have always done while you were here, sir. Oh, well, thank you. What I'm going to say now, I'm just saying between you and me, just. Well, now two Uh, lieutenants, two security officers. Take that job more important than anything else. No matter what any officer tells you, no matter what anybody above you tells you, your number one job is to make sure that everybody on the ship is safe and do whatever you need to do to make sure that that happens. And And now that you're a lieutenant, now you got to watch out for the people underneath you too. All the ensigns and I'll kind of like just, you know, tap them on the shoulder like I did with you and and Ricky and and uh, Jeffrey over there. Um, always make sure that they're safe. And they'll, and like you've always taken care of me, they'll always take care of you. It's a promise. And I'll clink glasses with them and throw, throw them back and then order more from Shrika, who's probably at this point drinking with us now. Yeah, at this point, I think uh, she's probably joined the reverie. So while while all the senior staff is up on the bridge, the junior staff is down here actually having a good time. <laughs> yeah, so at, at some point, uh, Shrieker and Quakenbush get ha- have a epic arm wrestling match again. Well, Quakenbush has not won yet, but everyone still cheers. Wow. And 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 Zeb and I are taking bets from everybody else in the duck about who's winning and giving even bigger and bigger odds that Quackenbush can't win. Well, now we just have to make a roll of this. <laughs> uh, oh, so That's... I'll roll for Shrika. Uh, the way this will work is the first individual to score five stress worth of damage will win the uh, arm wrestling contest. So it's going to be a daring security for Quackenbush. If you have hand-to-hand combat, hand-to-hand it applies. Combat, yeah. And yes, uh, I'd like you to roll me a 1d100 before we do the daring security. And this will represent who is the active character. All right. Well, let's uh, let's see what, uh, what Shrika rolls. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mirthrin, yeah, you are going to be considered the active character for this. <clears throat> All righty. All right, so let's... So, uh, Daring Security, was it? Yep, Daring Security, difficulty one. And, uh, yeah, good news is uh, as long as you get one success, you will, in fact, uh, make some progress in arm wrestling. Yep, there we go. All right, so go ahead and roll me a six challenge die, please. Yeah, so Quakenbush, it's, you know, at first it seems like your quote-unquote usual arm wrestling match with this Gorn bartender. But, you know, you get maybe about halfway down, or she gets your hand about halfway down towards uh, the goal on her side. But then with a surge of uh, renewed vigor and strength, you pull your hand back up and you twist your wrist and you slam hers down on the table and there's... There's almost silence as everybody sees this happen. Um, and as soon as it happens, the quiet goes throughout the room. Drake just kind of stops, looks at both of them, and then starts up the three cheers for Lieutenant for Lieutenant Quackenbush, and then get the entire bar going again. And uh, as everybody's cheering, he, he just kind of leans over to Shriek and go, by the way, the drinks are on you now. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a joke. And she and just Drake stares just, at you blankly. Drake just kind of shakes his head and reaches behind the bar for a bottle. 
Oh, you find something that's green. No one knows what it is. It's just green. Hey, that's completely uh, fine. The I junior officers are getting what hammered off of it. No idea. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, in that case, we now go to the bridge where the uh, most of the senior staff are uh, t- currently positioned. Uh, I suppose we'll do it that uh, Panek and uh, Skull, you guys are at the front of the bridge. Everyone else is sort of standing at parade rest as uh, Skull. I believe you know what to do. Thank you all for your, thank you all for your coming, and I'd like to thank all of you for your service for the last two years of my life as captain of the Ophion. It has been a momentous journey. We have done great things together, and this ship and crew will continue this tradition long after I am promoted well above, or well until I'm promoted into a desk. I quickly gauge the room, see no one's really laughing or smiling at this bad pun, and then I move on. We knew you were changeling all along. <laughs> the in uh, uh uh in recognizing Commander Pinnock's um return it, and my recent promotion, there is an obvious void in, on this bridge, and I glance obviously at the chair. And I also know that Commander Pinnock is not one for long flowery speeches. Therefore, uh computer. Transfer command codes and captaincy of the USS Ophion to one L- Commander Pinnock, soon to be Captain Pinnock. Uh, authorization, Rear Admiral Barton Skull, Beta Pi 3694. And there's that sort of uh, piping whistle that apparently isn't anywhere on Roll 20s SoundCloud. Um, but, you know, that, that sort of whistle followed by a shipwide announcement that the command has been transferred. It's a bosun whistle. Yeah. Yeah. Commander Panek, I hereby promote you to Captain Panek of the USS Ophion. I uh, step forward and I uh, I relieve you of command, sir. And it has been an honor serving with you and having you as my first officer and friend, Panek. I hope that our tradition will, our relationship will be as strong as I move off this vessel. I will look after your ship, Captain. My first order of business as captain is to say, you may take the chair with you. I smile at that. Thank you. Hopefully I will have an office that will accommodate it. I'm sure as a rear admiral that you can pull some strings. Indeed. If you don't mind, I would like to uh, clear my personal effects up and make it yours. I then take I, all the time you need, uh, Admiral. I, uh, lean in close. This is a... The crew would like a small speech now, if you like, Pinnock. And then I stand off to the side. Uh, for a second I just kind of stand there, making eye contact with everyone. Uh, I understand that there are some resonating doubts as to my ability to lead this ship, concerning my recent absence. I will endeavor to relieve you of these doubts and show you that I can take care of this crew and this family just as well as the as the Admiral has. I'm asking you to, well, this is an unusual of Vulcan, but to put your trust into me. This is a emotional affectation. I trust that some of you can complete this. I understand that some of you believe I'm, I am unapproachable, rigid, unbending. This may be true in some cases, but I only this is my my sturdiness is only in protecting the crew. I will rely upon you all to be my flexibility, my intuition. I'm not one for speeches, so please, you're dismissed. And, you know, there's a polite uh, clapping of hands, a quick round of applause, and everyone begins to take a seat. Um, uh, okay, I'm... can we take a quick break there before the last bit? Yeah. Uh, Works for me. 
<laughs> yeah, so let's uh, let's take a uh, five to ten minute break, and then uh, we'll wrap up any scenes anyone has, and then we'll have a final send off from the admiral. But yeah, let's uh, right. let's say be back in about ten minutes, guys. Cool. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. Hey. I'm back. Welcome back. Happy to be here. Of course, now I have the uh, trouble of figuring out uh, what token, or not what token, what maps to use for your guys' office. That's going to be fun. I mean, we could just use the same maps. It's only a theater set piece after all. This is true. Who makes these? Um, it's was it draw? Is it a tile set sheet somewhere, or does an artist work on them? Uh, so the maps like this one, the overhead ones, um, the bridges were all done by Locke. Locke very graciously did uh, bridges for all of us. Oh, cool. Um, he used the TNG um, set from Modifius, and he just photoshopped away. Oh, cool. Um, so any of the over the overheads are usually either from locks or they're straight from the Modifius set. Um, any sort of uh, orthographic view, like the one of main engineering, is <laughs> something that was put out... I forget specifically where, but there's deck plans and such for um, all sorts of ships. Cool. Yep, I'm back. Welcome back. Uh, I'm here too. All right, cool. I think we're just waiting on uh, Preer and Locke. I'm here. All right, just waiting on Locke. I'm here too. I'm just watching something. All right. <laughs> 
In that case, I will put us back on the normal screen. Alrighty. So, uh, we have any last scenes you guys want with your characters before so, we bring Ophion to a close. Um, so once the uh, everyone's wrapping up from the promotion ceremony, mm -hmm. I'm just going to tap Merthyr on the shoulder and indicate capped uh, ready room, please. Certainly, Admiral. And of course, I haven't fixed out, out of character, yet. I'd also like to do a scene with Panek after this at some point. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> um, I you guys can offer, start as I fix your tokens. Yep. I offer Merthyn, uh to sit down and uh, double tap my comm badge and ask Zenixia to come up as well. Yep. And uh, Zenixia mm -hmm. reports uh, she's on her way. All right. Make small talk with Merthyn, congratulating him about his medal recipient. Um, right. and then thank as you, thank you, you too, you too. Why, well, thank you. It's kind of odd to see that. I'm not going to lie, but um, and as Zenixia shows up, so um, Commander Merthrin, uh, being a rear admiral, allows me access into uh, certain databases and gives me a contact list of individuals I had not had the privilege of being able to reach out to before. And this in might be of interest to the pair of you. Um, um, the the sort of look curiously over the next year, they'll sort of exchange a, a glance and continue listening. The Slough had a... Pr um, about six months after we first encountered the Slough, uh, the uh, diplomats reported that the Slough were interested in Federation membership as... Uh, a vassal state until full ties could be made. This has gone quite well, actually. The uh, diplomatic processes have apparently moved rather uh, swiftly, probably because of the technology that the ring world uh, possesses. <coughs> I'm not going to lie, there's probably some self serving interests in getting access to study your uh, ring worlds, uh, Zenixia. And we've given what has been brought to my attention of recent strong arm tactics. I will do everything I can to ensure that this is not the case going forward. And that everything is done by the book, diplomatically, and as at the will of both parties. Uh, the reason that you're here, Commander Merthrin, is that the Starfleet Corps of Engineers are sending a vessel as part of the diplomatic task force. Um. It is, yes. uh, it is known as the USS Montgomery. It is not a pleasant ship. It was a, a Jaeger class. Um, admittedly, it was one of those that had been thrown together near the end of the, dip of the Dominion War. It's no longer deemed uh, fit for an exploration purpose. But the Starfleet Corps of Engineers has taken on many of these uh, small ships uh, small ships to for their own purposes and it's not it's uncommon not... sorry mm, curious um, it's not uncommon for these small vessels serving as part of a large fleet uh, to be commanded by a commander the Starfleet Corps of Engineers has offered uh, I slide a p uh, pad over to you with uh, transfer orders this is, at the this is at the behest of the Starfleet Corps of Engineers, and entirely up to your decision. I fully understand mm -hmm. if you wish to stay on the Ophion as Chief Engineer, but mm -hmm. I've seen you come a long way, and I think you might be ready for command, whether or not you believe that or not. Yeah, so I'm going to sort of take the pad, sort of wander over to the couch or chair or whatever, and just sort of <laughs> sit there looking at it for a bit. You know... Six months ago, I probably would have turned this down. But, well, a lot's happened since then. Now, I keep going back to... Captain, did you have any chance to interact with <laughs> Sloan before he was shipped off ship? Very minimally. Had that after um, 
his initial interrogation had proven very reticent to talk to anyone. He just sort of just sort stared of and didn't speak didn't much speak to, anyone. to anyone. Yes, I didn't talk to him directly, but uh, I was in the room while they were setting up the stasis chamber to transfer him off ship. <sighs> and you might be able to guess from his attitude, but there was just, there was something chilling about Being an empath gives you an interesting uh, perspective on people. Every, you can tell when people are actually confident and when they're merely projecting confidence. And I have never met anyone so absolutely certain that they were right. It honestly scared me. Zealotry is a very is a very dangerous mindset, whether, whether zeal zealotry no. comes from an ally or an enemy. Yes. The thing is, he truly believes that everything he did was for the good of the Federation, and yet... Well... The Nezkov aren't being mistreated now anymore, but he made sure... He made sure that first contact with them went the way that it did. That fact is going to be a part of their history now forever. Like, that damage can't be undone. If it makes you... If it puts your mind at ease, Merthrin, it doesn't sound like the initial stages of diplomacy with these uh, Slough had any uh, mirroring with the Nezkov. Hmm. Still, for my own peace of mind, I definitely like to be there to make sure. Of course. Besides, Admiral, you've done a lot to convince me that the Federation hadn't lost what mattered most during the war. And now I, um, up till now, I figured that the best way I could ensure it didn't would be just to do what I could, where I could, and leave it at that. But now I see that it's more complicated than that. The Federation has enemies, and those enemies aren't always obvious. Sometimes those enemies don't even realize they're enemies. I, th hmm. I just sort of sit, sit back, waiting patiently. Yep, yep, I'm waiting I'm patiently for you. Here. Yeah. I think I'll you don't accept. have to decide now. Hmm. Okay. I think I will accept the commission, though. <clears throat> Besides, you're at Amber Hall now. You're gonna, you're going to need captains you can rely on at a pinch. Yes. Um, I'm building my. I've only been an admiral for two, day, two days, and I'm already playing Kingmaker. <laughs> for two hours, and I'm already playing Kingmaker. And Miss Zenixia, are you... You have that open... Um, open, pro, uh, open promotion. Are you wishing to accept and become a crew member within Starfleet? I believe I am, Admiral, uh, so long as I am able to follow Mirthrin. Well, Merthrin just accepted command of a of his own starship. I believe he can request personnel at his leisure now. As I just lean back in my chair and steeple my fingers. <laughs> well, Admiral, I will leave you to your work. And sort of holds up the pad. I have some paperwork to fill out. Congratulations, Commander. I look forward to seeing you in the Sabine. He sort of gives a salute and goes to leave. And I'm going to head out myself and head down. Uh, and... You bump into Vladis as you come out. 
Oh, uh, 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 Anaron, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I, I had a, had something I had to w- would like to ask you. Uh, which you are you referring to, Merthyrn or Captain or Admiral? Uh, the Admiral. Oh, I do a quick uh, 180 and motion motion that he follow me back into the room. Apologies, Vladis. What can I oh, do no, for no, you? No, no, it's, it's my apologies to in, in, uh, interrupt, but uh, I, I had a request, and I, I'm sure this is far below your pay grade now, but not that we get paid, which is not a thing to say, but I, I didn't, I didn't know if I could take this to the captain, but uh, and this is still your ready room, and well, you're still on the ship, and you're in this position now, so I thought maybe you would handle this, but I'm not quite sure, but I'd like to request leave. You see, my second wife is getting married. And I would totally love to extend an invitation to you and the crew. I would be honored to accept your invitation. However, crew leave is now no longer my responsibility. Uh, you, will have, uh, you will have to take that up with the captain or whoever the captain decides to be his first officer. I see. I am. I would truly enjoy going to a wedding. It's been some time since I've been, a, been at one. Well, the invitation is still open and stands, and we'll be on Denovia. Of course. Well, thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry for interrupting, and I will take this to the proper people. Of course. Have yourself a... Enjoy the rest of your uh, shift, Ensign. Uh, thank you. You, uh, uh, you too, Admiral? Uh, kind of quite a reflection at the end, like if you have a shift, I don't, I don't know. Uh, the more... The more pips you get, the less you, longer your shifts become. And I'm going to head down and see if I can't find Drake in his quarters. Okay. And uh, I'm, yep, seeing break, we could have uh, something with Mirthrin and Panek. Yeah, I was going to say, let's do Mirthrin and Panek. So there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Enter. <clears throat> After- mm, afternoon, Captain. Yes, what can I do for you, Commander? Yeah, and Mesmer basically will hand in the completed paperwork for the official request for transfer uh, to the uh, what? What was the ship called again? Montgomery. Um, yep, the uh, Montgomery. to the USS Montgomery. I'll give it a quick scan over, and then I'll, I'll I'll put it down. The thank you, Commander. Uh, I see you are moving along and forward as well as most of this crew seems to be. Uh, tell me, tell me. what do you? What are your thoughts on? Prague. I seem to be losing my chief engineer here. Well, so long as you don't mind a constant string of complaints about the lack of resources, Prague is probably the best pick for chief engineer I could uh, I could suggest. Yes, I I believe his argumentative and logical nature will be an interesting challenge. Well, it'll definitely take some getting used to, but he has never let me down yet. And how are you looking forward to command? Uh, trepidatious, but uh, given all that's happened in the last six months, feeling a lot more ready for it than I otherwise would have. Seems to be have been a transformative uh time for you. For us all. You seem to have grown into quite an adept officer. Your skills will be Mm. sorely missed here. Hmm. I'll admit, uh, I I did feel a bit guilty about uh, leaving you in the lurch here, so to speak. But uh, given all that's happened, uh, I feel you might benefit from something of a clean slate to begin your captaincy. Yes, there are many, although many connections have been forged during my time here, uh, I believe it would be better to start off fresh with people in new people with most people in new positions. Although I understand that most of the senior staff will be staying. Hmm. Panek and Bertrand will sort of like go over and like sit down in one of the chairs. I ra- raise my eyebrow at this. Yep. I- I'm not Vulcan, so I can't presume to f- 
full, fully empathize with what uh, what you've gone through, but I did grow up on Vulcan. This is this is factual, yes. <clears throat> I've spoken with a few of the crew, the Chatsu in particular. The whole business with Sloan. Well, as as with most, as in most cases, adversity pushed people to excel. And for most people, this the whole in the whole endeavor was something of a trial by fire, and everyone came out better for it. I guess what I guess what I'm trying to say, Panek, is. You did not let us down. We let you down. Not quite sure I follow, Commander. People tend to assume that Vulcans are completely unassailable, beings without logic. But you and I both know that's not true. You are correct. Sorok's teachings do talk about the need to not lose our, how should I say, biological functions, our methods in which we perceive the world. We have adapted to being emotionless and logical. We are not biologically formed that way, and to deny those facets of ourselves would, would in itself be illogical. It would be like touching a cold desk and trying to convince myself that it is not cold. Uh, no, done. And now out of character, I've lost my train of thought. I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> Give me a second. Yes, but yes. Um, emotion emotional people like me, we're more like um, more like trees. We bend and flex with the stresses that get put upon us. Vulcans are, Vulcans are more like steel, unbending until something gets into a stress fracture. And, well, honestly, I feel like I, of all people, should have realized something was wrong before it went wrong. I should have been able to see the cracks, and I didn't. I believe you are unnecessarily assigning blame to yourself, Commander. This was in no way your fault, or was expected of you to somehow prevent. You were the chief engineer, not the counselor, not the captain. Mm, I acknowledge this. Logically, there is no blame here. It was simply an unforeseen series of circumstances that played out the only way they could have. But still. Uh, I do not regret what has happened. The shattering of my psyche came as a consequence of actions I took to protect the crew. That. I can live with that. That is my responsibility. Mithrin will sort of like nod for a bit and as well. You'll make a good captain, Pinnick. Yes, I if I can learn to meeting. bend every now and again. You know what? There is this one saying that I remember. Uh, let me out of character check what she was called again. Uh, there was a quote that Taval. Uh, occasionally 
mentioned that uh, was a favourite of my birth mother's. On the edge of reason and an emotion, there lies the infinity of possibility. A little bit on the flowery side. But uh, something I've always taken to heart. I appreciate um, sharing that, and I will try to take some sense of advice from it. Well, if you're if you're ever in the region of the Sabine Expanse, I'm always a, I'm always available. All of you need me. I do not know what awaits the Ophion or where your next orders are. I'm sure I'll be hearing from our recently promoted Rear Admiral soon, and I will stand and offer him my hand. Yeah, the Mithrin will reach over and shake him. And then I'll give him a Vulcan salute. Yeah, the Mithrin will, will, of course, expertly return it. Peace and long life. Live long and prosper. Very nice. And next, we cut to Captain. You are chiming at Drake's quarters. Uh, enter. Step in. Um, Drake is packing. As expected. Oh, oh uh, I, I would say Captain, as your, your name tag states, but, uh, Admiral, um... Why are you coming this this low down on decks? I, I'd call you lieutenant, but that would imply that you would be reporting to me and that this was a milit an official conversation. But I think it best that this just sort of happened between friends, if that's all right. Of course, Captain. Um, take a seat. I'll pull up a chair, sort of shift around in it as it's not as comfortable as the one too, but I find my groove. So I received two very interesting pieces of paperwork almost at the same time. One from Starfleet Intelligence authorizing your promotion and one from Panek transferring you off the ship. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure which is factually accurate and I would prefer that I don't find out in this instance right now. All I know is that the Ophion's l losing a very um, determined individual and a very loyal person. And whether or not he admits it, I think Pinek will hopefully miss you in his own way. <laughs> uh, Skull, okay. that, that, that would imply that Vulcans have any sort of emotion or feeling that somebody who is useful... Or a welcome member of the team has gone missing, and Panek has neither of those. Okay, that was a failed attempt at diplomacy. Um, yeah, Panek probably won't miss you, but I certainly would. Um, you have a unique set of talents, and in my role, there may come a time when I need someone with a unique set of talents. So, hmm. I'm hoping that if a transfer request comes for you to report under my flag, you will at least consider it. So, uh, so I take it you, you didn't read the, uh, entirety of the pad that has information about my promotion, then, did you? Eh, I know it has something to do with section, or, uh, sorry, I know it has something to do with the Starfleet intelligence, an op something about operational command? Uh, mm -hmm. to be fair, even in Starfleet Intelligence, doesn't tell us regular admirals everything. No, that's true. They they really don't. Um, well, it, it's... It, let's just say that you and I won't be too far apart. I'm... Raise an eye about that? Okay. Well, then it'll be a pleasure to have you in my proximity, Mr. Drake. Of course. Uh, Skull, I... Uh... Um, uh, as, as ever, and as I told you after the business with Sloan, um, I, 
I will always be here to do what I do best. And if you need me, all you need to do is call and tell me what I need to do. <laughs> I shall note that in my unofficial record. And, um, I, uh, well, I guess to answer your previous question, uh, both of those pieces of information are true. It, except for the fact that Panek didn't get the one, um, he doesn't know about the one that you do. So to him, he's getting rid of a problem and I'm going off to never be seen again. And I shall be sure to ensure that operational security is maintained. I'll stand up and shake your hands. Safe travels wherever you lead, Mr. Damien, or Darian. Um, and, uh, and you, Barton. Um, stay safe, keep people around you close, and always remember to take care of the people underneath you. Yes, I just now have a lot more people under me than before. I wonder if they'll let me take the still. Hmm. And I'll mutter that as I head out. As he's, wa as he's walking out, Drake goes, We have a still on the ship? <laughs> and then Drake will... Drake will uh, no, nah, he knew about it. But uh, he'll, he'll continue to... Um, uh, to pack everything up, and if anybody else on the ship sees him, he it, will be wearing intelligence uniform. So no colors; it's black and gray. Alrighty. But he does have a. Um, instead of one pip, he now has three. All right. Uh, let's go to either Locke or Preer. Uh, do you guys have any final send-offs for those two characters? No, I don't think so, sadly. Okay. Nothing particularly, just me and Sickbay. All right. So actually, I have a uh, funny sort of follow-up here. So uh, both of you uh, have been called to Sickbay. Uh, you don't know why. Uh, but when you get there, uh, Shatsu walks in, and uh, she is carrying uh, what appears to be a picnic basket. And she says, ah, good, I'm glad you both could make it. Uh, doctor, I would like your professional opinion on this. And she moves over and uh, she opens up the basket and lets you see what's inside. And it is literally a blue kitten. <laughs> um, that's interesting coloration. Yes, I, uh, I pulled some strings, and I, I thought it would be a great way to surprise a certain someone. I think it would be a wonderful surprise. <laughs> and with that, Shatsu kind of comes up to you, Locke, uh, takes the cat out of the picnic basket, puts it in your arms, and says, Congrats, you're now technically a father. <laughs> well, Prayer will clap. So they don't think our species are actually biologically compatible. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, good to have a fur baby, as it were. Indeed. It holds it very awkwardly. And it, it does the typical cat thing where it just sort of meows up at you. It likes you, Locke. If it's anything like my cat, it'll immediately claw at my its tunic and crawl its way up on and then just kind of like sit on his shoulder pause the entire way mm -hmm. oh lovely yes it, it, it seems to be uh scratching my ear careful it might bite i I'm, i've heard that's a sign of affection chatsu coughs everyone knows why Clawing you could also be a sign of affection. Further coughing. <laughs> yes. Well, it is... I guess we'll need to think of a name. Is, or, or is that solely for me? Eh, Shatsu kind of smiles and says, I, I have a list that we can go through. And she sort of uh, pulls out a pad and begins going through a list of names. Um, can I... 
can I jump in on this? Sure. Are, are you coming in as Drake or someone else? Uh, Drake, because okay. the only other person I'd come into this sick bay as is not really in this galaxy. Gotcha. All right. So Drake, you poke your head in. Um, Drake will walk in, uh, as I just said, in intelligence uniform, mm -hmm. um, with his a small gear bag over his shoulder and um, and kind of poke his head in. Uh, Am I interrupting anything? No. Just... Can he check up? Ah. And he'll kind of look over at Shatsu and look back at Locke and... Oh. 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 Not I get it like now. That, but I think Priya is here to make sure it's uh, in good health and give it its shots. Wonderful. Well, that's always good to know. Are um, you departing now, Lieutenant? Uh, I am. I'm getting ready to disembark. Um, and uh, I uh, just wanted to thank, actually, both of you. And in prayer, too. I mean, it's always good to have a doctor to put you back together. I enjoyed our time together. I will probably miss you. It was good to have someone who, uh, who knew what my, my past and didn't judge me for it to the same extent. Uh, it was a pleasure. And and it was a pleasure to serve with you too. And I I feel the same sentiment that uh, not everybody understands what we went through and the way our minds work and things of that nature. Um, you made me feel significantly less paranoid. Well, um, we were always told that every good field operator needs to have a good analyst and if there was anything that you were it was a an amazing analyst and um and shatsu commander you were a good boss hmm. thank you lieutenant or is it commander now um it's somewhere in there and he just kind of <laughs> like smirks um but uh i i uh wanted to leave you guys a couple of things and uh he'll dig into his gear bag and he pulls out um one of he pulls out one of the um or actually the uh weapon from Harlock's ship and he gives it to Shatsu and says um I always had plans that if I actually got to take the security office I was going to mount that to the wall so maybe you could uh handle that for me and uh decorate your office a little bit. It will be done. And your uh, collection of weaponry? Well, any of us that have fought for as long as we have, we tend to have a large collection. Well, I, I believe most of hers are bladed, but Oh, uh, I've 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 got some detangs that some were given as gifts and some were not given. Well, I guess you could say they were given and then left stuck in me. Um, anyways, uh, and Locke, uh, and he'll pull out the comm badge. I, uh, I did some work on the explosive on it. Um, and, uh, it's more stable than it was before. Oh, so right. you can actually probably re, uh, reproduce these as much as you want. Thank you. And in that little, uh, space where you, uh, you found I had information in the computer banks. So I left the specs for it too. Um, and Thank if you, um, Lieutenant Commander, <laughs> yeah, ranks. Um, and if uh, if uh, a little rumor I heard is true, watch out for the crew. Be the um, well, the old saying is "good cop." to uh, the crew's captain's, new captain's bad cop. I the will. color's right. I'll, I'll do what I can to keep keep him safe. Well. And be that voice of reason. Good. They, uh, the crew deserves it. They've had a great captain in Skull, and they deserve to have a command staff that they can trust and they can believe in. And uh, maybe you can get uh, 
connect the lighting up a little bit. And if you can't, and you need somebody to punch him in the head, I will happily transport onto the ship with nobody knowing, punch him in the head, and disappear before anybody knows about it. And Drake looks deadpan serious. If I ever need anyone punched in the head, uh, Darian, you will be the first person I think of. Well, thank you. But anyways, I've got to catch a shuttle that's not docked with this ship currently. So I will see you all when I see you. And Stay Drake safe. Will... Thank you. Always. Drake will just kind of nod and walk out of sick bay. All right. And now, without any further ado, Captain, I believe you specifically requested to have the final say. So, what is your final log going to say? Captain's log. Stardate 5... Stardate 57526.2 This will be my final log as captain of the USS Sophia. Panek has come far in his time as my first officer. It is only logical that he be promoted to captain as I take the jump into my new rank as rear admiral. Looking back, the Ophion's contribution to the Federation cannot be denied. We've discovered new life, new civilizations, and made new friends. With the Ophion's discovery of the Pandora's Gate, our own galaxy may feel the repercussions for a century, if not longer. The most satisfying thing, though, is seeing war-weary men and women find their spark and zeal for exploration once more. I have no idea what will happen next, but if every Starfleet crew is as good as the one I've served with, I have no doubt the Federation will endure for centuries to come. End log. Very well. And the final sort of scene that we see is the Ophion drifting through space with Earth in the background. And that is where, ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing the Ophion campaign to a close. Now, as a reminder, we will be seeing these very same players and some of these characters in February. But this is the official end of the Ophion campaign. So, uh, thank you so much, both player of, and viewer alike. You guys have been an absolute treat, and I look forward to games with you in the future. Uh, this is now where I'm going to end the stream, but players, if you could stick around for a little bit longer, that would be great. So again, to anyone watching on Twitch or on YouTube, thank you so much for uh, joining us on this journey, and hopefully you will join us with the Almathea campaign. Bye stream.